everyone. Uh, everyone watching this, uh, thanks for doing so. Let's go over quest number five. Okay, so we're going to write the equation of a line that goes to these two points. Uh, remember that the equation of a line, um, I would say your most popular form, is uh, the slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. You also have the point slope form. Either one of these would be fine. Uh, some of you did point slope form and absolutely you know, got full credit if it was written correctly. Um, but oftentimes people will use this, so let's use this. Uh, first we'll find the slope. Um, since this is, uh, is this the same thing? Yeah, this is, this is the test, so I won't go over too much why we find the slope this way. If you want to know that, then uh, come ask me or uh, review Quest 4 uh, video. Uh, but we'll just go ahead and find the slope. Negative 2 minus negative 1 over 2 minus 4, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Negative 2 plus 1, that's negative 1. And 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So that's a slope of positive 1 half. And so we're trying to write this equation. We now have the slope. And we have x's and y's all over the place. So I'll choose this x and this y to plug in here and here and find this. So y is negative 2 equals 1 half the slope times 2, the value for x we plugged in, plus b. So negative 2 equals 1 half times 2 is 1, plus b. I'll subtract 1 from both sides. b is negative 3. So now I have all the pieces that I need. y equals 1 half x minus 3. Um, equation of the line of this parallel that goes through this point. All right. So Essentially, I'm telling you that the slope of this line is 2. That's all I'm telling you. Right? Or sorry, negative 2. And everything else about the equation of this line is completely irrelevant and useless. Uh, we only need to know that the uh, slope is negative 2 and parallel lines have the same slope, so this has a slope of negative 2. Uh, and now we are you know, at this point where we have the slope, and we have an x and a y, and we'll write the equation exactly the same way. We have a y, that's negative 5, equals the slope, times x, plus b. Negative 5 equals negative 12, plus b. Add 12 to both sides. b is 7. So y equals negative 2x plus 7. Uh, almost the same thing, except for it's perpendicular. So I am still telling you just basically what the slope of this line is. But perpendicular lines do not have the same slope. They have different kinds of slopes. They have opposite reciprocal slopes. So they have a positive 3. This is a positive 3 over 1 slope, or just positive 3. Okay. So this slope is a positive 3. Where this is negative, this is positive. Where this is 1 over 3, this is 3 over 1. Opposite reciprocal slopes. So again, we have the slope, and we have a point, so 5 equals 3 times 5 plus b. And we'll solve for b, and when we solve for b, we get b is negative 10. I'm sure you don't need me to walk you through that. <coughs> y equals 3x minus 10. Next. Okay, write the equation of the line shown again. y equals mx plus b. All right, we at least should know, I've said this lots and lots of times, that this is the slope, right? So I should be able to at least write y equals 1, one third x, right? Because the slope is up 1 over 3, up 1 over 3, right? Change in y or change in x between two points. How much does y change? How much does x change? y changes 1, x changes 3, so 1 third x. Uh, and b is the y-intercept. It is negative 2. There's a y-intercept looking at looking you right in the face. Negative 2. 1 third x minus 2. Let's just test it, check this equation out. Make sure it works the way that it ought to work for these two points at least. Uh, so if we put in 0, we should get out negative 2. y equals 1 third times 0. Well, of course, we're going to get negative 2 because we're plugging 0 in and making this term go away. OK, so y equals negative 2. Good. We just put in 0, got out negative 2. So it gives us that point y equals 1 third, we should plug in 3 and get out negative 1, so plug in 3, minus 2, y equals, well, 1 third times 3 is just 1, minus 2 is negative 1, Z, uh, sorry, 3, negative 1, and that's 
what we get there, or what we should get. Okay, let's well, say that's a three. Uh, write the equation in slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form looks like y equals mx plus b, and of course you can't just float a five over to the other side of the equation. That's ridiculous. It would be like taking a uh, scales, right? We've seen scales so many times. We're getting sick of them. You got a scale, and on this side you have 5x plus y, and on this side you have 6. If you just write the answer is y equals 5x plus 6 by just like floating this guy over here, imagine you were, you, you had a scale like in front of you, and you were to take something from this side and just float it over here. Okay, what would that do? Well, I take it off of this side, so initially that would make this side lighter, and this side would go up, right? This side is, is now uh, relatively heavier than this side. And then I put this over here, and now it's just gonna make this side even heavier than this side. Right? That's not the way to do it. No, no, no. <coughs> to get this to look like this, well, I don't want mx plus y equals six, right? I want the m and the x on this side with, uh, with the y-intercept, so I'm gonna have to get y by itself, simple enough, subtract five x from both sides. So we have, y equals negative 5x plus 6, because we just get y by itself, just solve for y, right? I can get right the equation in slope-intercept form. Could just as easily say, uh, get y by itself. Okay. Um, write the equation in point-slope form, okay? For uh, form that uh, has the given slope, I should have said given, the given slope, and continues to uh, it contains the given point. So it has this slope and it has this point. This couldn't be easier because this point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And remember, this, these two are variables. Variables. These two are from a point, and this is the slope. Hence, your point slope form. So. Uh, I guess there's just the tiniest bit of work to do here. Let me switch colors just to switch it up. Y minus Y1, now Y1 is negative 5, equals the slope, negative 5 halves, times X minus X1. X1 is negative 4. So minus a negative 5, that's the same as plus 5, so I'll just rewrite it that way. This is the little bit of work I was referring to. X minus negative 2, that's X plus, or sorry, minus negative 4, that's X plus 4 y plus 5 equals negative 5 halves times x plus 4. All right, here we go. There's a, a fun one. <coughs> um, all right, so you're shoveling a sidewalk. Uh, after four minutes, five feet of the sidewalk is still covered in snow. After eight minutes, nine feet of sidewalk is still covered in snow. Write an equation that represents the amount in feet of sidewalk that still has snow on it after x minutes. All right, so uh, we could approach it one way where we know that obviously this is going to be a linear function where it looks like y equals mx plus b. Okay, we could also just use our intuition and we we get the idea like there's some amount of of snow on a sidewalk. Okay, so here's the sidewalk. It has a bunch of, uh, I guess this is what snow looks like, okay? And you're gonna shovel some of that snow. So after a while, some of this snow is gonna be gone, right? There'll be some snow left, and you'll shovel for a while longer. This much snow will be gone, there'll be this much snow left, right? And the equation, like y, is going to tell us how many feet of snow there is, right? So that's y. And x will be the number of minutes we've been shoveling. So after how many minutes, how much work is there left to do is another way to think of it. All right. So we've got some initial amount and we are losing snow over time. So we have some kind of a, a negative rate, right? Because uh, if we start with some snow, we're going to be subtracting some snow um, <coughs> over time. Okay. So Let's maybe just figure out how fast we're shoveling, all right? So at four minutes, 15 feet of uh, the sidewalk is still covered in snow. After eight minutes, nine feet of the sidewalk is still covered in snow. 
Well, that we went from 15 feet left to 9 feet left, so we must have taken out, what, 6 feet, right? So we just took out 6 feet of snow. How long did that take us? Well, 4 minutes and 8 minutes, that took 4 minutes, right? Between 4 minutes and 8 minutes, that took 4 minutes. So we are, we're shoveling at a rate of 6 feet every 4 minutes. And uh, if it's kind of caked on there and, and very icy, that's not too bad. If it's really fluffy, then you should really, I don't know, practice more shoveling because that's pretty slow. But anyway, we're, we're losing this amount of snow every four minutes, right? So we're subtracting this amount of snow from the sidewalk every four minutes, okay? So it just remains to figure out what, how much did we start with? How many feet of snow did we start with that we're subtracting six feet every four minutes, right? Six feet every four minutes times X minutes. How much is that starting amount? Well, I know that the amount of snow is gonna be equal to that rate, right? Uh, if we add on the, the start, well, we'll call it B. Okay, so that's the starting amount. The starting amount every, you know, X minutes, right? If it's four minutes, we subtract off six feet. If it's, uh, actually, if it's two minutes, right? If it's two minutes, then we'll subtract out three feet, right? So say this is two, two minutes have gone by, three feet are gone. Two minutes have gone by, three feet have gone away. So we just need to figure out how many feet there were to start with which some of you just kind of looked and counted backwards, and that works fine. But let's also uh, you know, exercise our, uh, our new skills in, in writing equations and figure out what must this starting amount be um, using our equation skills. Well, I know that if I were to plug in four minutes into this equation, right, and take the starting amount and subtract off this amount here that I would lose after four minutes, um, there should be 15 feet of snow left. I know that from that. I could also say after eight minutes, there should be nine feet of snow left. It doesn't matter. Um, and now it's kind of like we have a point X and Y. We have the slope and we want to find the Y intercept, right? Um, so we have 15 equals of the two cancels the four. We got two negative three times two is negative six plus B. We solve for B and B is equal to 21. So uh, Y, equals negative uh, three, negative three halves x plus 21. And if you read ahead a little bit, how many feet of sidewalk were covered in snow when you started? 21 feet. That's what we just spent our time figuring out. Okay, it's just, I thought it was kind of funny that, that some of you answered this question, but you weren't able to finish this equation. Some of you even had y equals negative three halves x, but didn't have plus 21. Okay, remember that, yes, that is a y-intercept if we're graphing a line, but also uh, if it's a real-life situation, that's like wh how much there was uh, at time zero. Whenever you plug in zero, you're just going to get this number right here, uh, and that's all that will be there when you plug in zero for x. So at time zero, we have 21 feet. Now, when will the sidewalk, sidewalk be cleared? Now, this is different. Uh, because we're talking about the, s the, the snow being gone. How much snow will be left? Zero. What does y represent? The amount of snow left. So what will y be? y will be zero. Right? y represents the amount of snow left. The sidewalk is cleared, which means there's zero snow left. So we can plug in zero for y, and maybe now you can see what I was trying to get you to see and understand and, and show me that you understand is that when x is zero, we get one kind of piece of information, like what was going on at time zero. When y is zero, we get a different kind of information, information of like how long it takes. Excuse me. Okay, so uh, it, what I was saying was when zero, or when y is zero, we get a different kind of information, uh, how long it takes for all the snow to go away. Right? And it further, uh, emphasizes that x represents something, minutes, and y represents something, the amount of snow. Right? To answer these questions, you kind of have to have a little bit of a fluency with these equations and which, what variable uh, represents what. So anyway, the snow is zero. There are zero feet of snow left, and we're just going to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 21 from both sides. You get negative 21 equals negative 3 halves x. 
Um, I'm gonna get x by itself, so I'll multiply by negative two over three, right? Multiply by the reciprocal, multiply this side by negative two over three. All right, three divides the negative 21, leaves us with a negative seven. Negative two times negative seven is 14. So it takes 14 minutes. Some of your answers didn't come out nicely, like exactly 14 minutes. But you can shovel for a decimal amount of minutes, so you can put 14 point whatever, or however many minutes it turned out to be. Uh, I'm write the equation of the line that contains the two points. Here we go again. Uh, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, so 5 minus negative 1, 1 minus 5. 5 plus 1 is 6, 1 minus 5 is negative 4, negative 3 halves. There's our slope. And we have our choice, either of these points, it doesn't matter. Maybe this one and this one. So y equals m x plus b. Uh, so negative 3 halves times 1 is negative 3 halves. So, you know, I might as well not even have this here. Add 3 halves to both sides to uh, get it away from the b, plus 3 halves. So 5 plus 3 halves equals b. So 5, that's 10 halves to get a common denominator. B is 13 halves. So y equals negative 3 halves times x plus 13 halves, or 6.5. All right, so you earn 850 per hour, so we're getting into the inequalities. You earn 850 per hour at a summer job, write and solve an inequality that represents the number of hours you need to work in order to buy a digital camera, that's three hundred forty-eight point five, three hundred eighty dollars and fifty cents. Well, I want three hundred and forty-eight dollars and fifty cents. No less than that. Exactly that will do, and more than that will do, right? So, the amount of money that I'm shooting for should be on the low end. This should be the less than side, because if it would I actually earn, right? This is what this is my goal. And this is what I actually earn. If what I earn is more than what my goal is, then that's fine. Okay, uh, that's not always the case. Like if if we're looking at a problem where we're we're not trying to buy something, we're actually trying to like stay under budget. Then the target goal money would be on the greater side. We want to stay less than what our budget is. But that's not the case. We're trying to buy a camera, and so if we have more than enough money to buy the camera, that's okay. That's why the earn side is on the greater than side. Uh, so how like how are we gonna earn this money? Well, we earn eight fifty an hour. We're gonna work an unknown number of hours that we're gonna solve for right now. We'll call that eight fifty times x. Right, so eight eight fifty an hour times x hours is uh, at least is greater than or equal to the cost of the camera. And so we'll divide both sides by eight point five. 348.5 divided by 8.5. 348.5 divided by 8.5. So x is greater than or equal to 41 hours. All right? x is not equal to 41 hours because x could be greater than 41 hours. That's why we need to say x is greater than or equal to 41 hours. And you know, that's why it says inequality there. Test to see whether s equals 14 is a solution to s plus 10 is less than or equal to 15. If it is, then I should be able to plug it in there and get a true statement. 14 plus 10. Let's test and see if it, if it works. But we get 24 is less than or equal to 15. This is not true. This is false. So it's not a solution. Or a simple no will do. But you have to show this work. If you just write no or yes and you don't have any work, then there's no way that I know that you didn't just guess, luckily, you know, and that's a 50-50 shot if you're guessing. Um, okay, solve the inequality. So we're gonna treat it like an equation, only if we divide by a negative at some point, we'll switch the signs, or we'll switch the inequality signs. So we'll distribute the negative eight, just like we would in the equation. Negative eight w plus 24 is less than or equal to negative eight w minus 16. Um, and then I always like to say, well, I've got variables on both sides, so let's just solve that problem right now and not have variables on one of the sides, so I'll add 8w to cancel out this negative 8w, and I have to do the same thing to both sides. But look what happens, we get 24 
is less than or equal to negative 16. Keep in mind, negative aw plus aw is zero. Negative aw plus aw is not w, it's not uh, 16w, it's not negative 16w, it's nothing. It completely cancels itself out. And the same thing happens over here, negative aw plus aw completely cancels out. So we get 24 is less than or equal to negative 16, which is false. So it seems, you know, if we go back to, to the inequality the way it looks here, imagine trying to plug in a number for w here and w here. This guy, right here, and this guy, what do they have in common? Well, they'll be exactly the same. So some number and exactly the same number. So some number plus 24 is supposed to be the less than a number minus 16. How could I add 24 to a number and get a number that's less than that same number minus 16? It would be the same as 24 being less than or equal to negative 16, which is neither of those. So that's false. So what are we supposed to make of this? There is no value for w that I could plug in that would possibly ever make this inequality true. This side is always going to be bigger than this side, because this side is the number plus 24, and this is the number minus 16. So there's just no making this work, so there's no solution. Okay, If you wanted some steps to memorize, or, or a trick, or whatever, if, they, if the variables cancel each other out and you went up with a false statement, there's no solution. If you went up with a true statement, there's infinite solutions. Okay, there's literally anything will work in that case. Uh, solving this inequality, let's distribute like we did in the last one. 36 less than or equal to 6. Let's subtract 36, so we get 3g is less than or equal to negative 30. And divide by 3. And we're not going to switch the sign here. There is a negative and we are dividing, but the thing we're dividing by is positive, so we wouldn't switch the sign in this case. So g is less than or equal to negative 10. All right, and here we go. We're going to write an inequality that gives us this graph. Uh, maybe let's, let's graph this inequality and we'll work our way backwards. Okay, so remember, I'm just going to remind you, as we've been reminded many times during uh, class lectures and discussions, there's two parts to an inequality graph. There's the line, and that happens when both sides of the inequality are equal. There's the, the blacked out half, the blacked out half, this half, that happens when it's not equal. Right? The line is made of points that, that the, the coordinates are an x and a y that make the inequality equal. The blacked out half is uh, literally blacked out by a bunch of points. All those points make this inequality uh, not equal right, on both sides, but in the right way. They make this side bigger and this side smaller. Well, to find the equal part, well, let's let's look at what happens when both sides are equal. We just get this equation, and we've graphed equations like this billions of times. Maybe not billions; that might be an exaggeration. But it has a y-intercept of negative four, it has a slope of up one, two, three, four, five, and over four. And here we have our line. Uh, according to this inequality, is it okay for both sides to be equal? Yeah, it is. Right. So we'll include this line in our graph. By that I mean we're making it solid as opposed to dotted. Okay, so which half should be uh, blacked out by points, points uh, that represent x and y combinations that make the inequality not equal, right? Both sides not equal. Uh, well, either this is blacked out or, or this is blacked out with points. One of them is blacked out, and I could just take a guess. I guess that it's this half with this point in it, and I'm just going to test this point, 0, 0. And if it works, then great. That I must have picked, just by luck, the half that's supposed to be blacked out. Right? If it didn't, if it doesn't work, then, uh, well, I must have picked the wrong side, and the other side is the one that's supposed to be shaded. So we try it. 0, greater than or equal to 5 fourths times 0. Minus 4 it is 0. Greater than or equal to negative 4? Yes, it is. 0 is greater than negative 4. So I did just by luck happen to pick a point from the blacked out half, and I shade that in. Well, let's go back up to this guy and reverse engineer it. Um, I know it's going to you know, it's gonna be like y is greater than or equal to, or y is uh, less than or equal to. I know the equals to part is there because the line is solid. 
Uh, and I know it's going to look like the equation of a line um, because that's how the inequalities have worked so far, right? When you graph an inequality, part of it is going to be, it, it's going to look like this is an equal sign. That's just going to be like the cutting off point between the half that's shaded and the half that's not. Um, I know that it's going to be this one and not this one because y is on the less than side, y is on the less than side, and uh, y is vertical, and the less than uh, numbers vertically are down, right? So below the line, right? So pick any point on the line, right? So that's that x and y would make both sides of this equal. If I pick one below that, that would have a smaller y than this one, and so the y would be less. If I picked one up here, then the y would be greater, but we don't want that. We want the ones that make the, the y less, okay? So that it's below. Um, so we'll work with that. And all we have to do here is write the slope and y-intercept of this line. So we have uh, a plus 1, right, plus 1. And the slope looks like to be down 2 and to the right 1. So negative 2 slope and uh, negative 2x plus 1. So y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 1. Here we go. I'm going to solve this inequality. Subtract 7 from both sides. n is less than or equal to 10. n is less than or equal to 10. We just need to graph it. So like I could put a, you have to label, OK? So I could go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, right? But I have to label that 10 at least. Uh, and then I want to show everything that's less than or equal to 10. Well, 10 is equal to 10, so I'll shade that guy in. And then all this stuff is less than 10. And there we go. All right, graph, or uh, solve and graph. So let's see, 12x minus 7x is 5x plus 4 is less than or equal to 10 plus 44. Uh, I'll subtract, oh, you know what? I should have just added 10 and 44, 54. Then I'll subtract 4, subtract 4. 5x uh, is less than or equal to 50. Divide by 5 and x is less than or equal to 10. So we happen to get the same thing. x is less than or equal to 10. So let's call it 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. There's 10. Equal to 10, less than 10. Uh, is this a solution to the inequality? If it is, then if this is x and this is y, then that x and that y should look in this inequality. Let's test it. 5 times 2 plus 6 times 10. That's 10 plus 60. That's 70. Is that greater than or equal to negative 2? It really, really is. So yes, it is a solution to this inequality. All right, I believe that's it, because there's a bunch of blank space here. So that does it. Thanks for watching again, and if you have any questions, uh, just let me know.